to Constangy TV's Close Up on Workplace Law, where we zoom in on recent developments of interest to employers, to their attorneys, and to their human resources professionals. I'm your host, Lee Tyson, and I am a partner in Constangy's Atlanta office. So it seems like for the last couple of years, we've been telling you to expect new changes to overtime regulations, that they were going to happen any day. They were right around the corner, but then they kept on just not happening until now. So finally, in September of 2019, the Department of Labor announced changes, a long way to changes and a final rule to the overtime regulations and specifically to the threshold requirements for exemption. They haven't made any changes like this in about 15 years. So the impact is expected to be big and to affect multiple industries. And it's also going into effect on January 1st, 2020. So now seems like a really good time for us to familiarize ourselves with these changes and make sure that we're ready for them. So here today to talk to us about all of this is Jim Coleman. And Jim is a partner in our Washington DC Metro office. He's also the co-chair of our wage hour practice group. And he has about 40 years of experience in advising clients about how to deal with wage hour issues. And he also deals with me and advises me on them because he is the first person I call whenever I get an FLSA question. So we're really excited to have him here to show us what's up. So Jim, welcome. Good afternoon, Lee, happy to be here. So just for the get go, reading the DOLs, uh, they're, they've got stuff up on the website and their press releases. It sounds like they're expecting a lot fewer workers to be considered exempt as a result of these regulations. Is that right? Yes, the Labor Department is estimating a direct impact of this um, new rule on about 1.3 million employees and what they're really targeting there are currently exempt employees that earn the current minimum salary that's required, which is 455 a week, but less than the new minimum weekly salary, which will move to 684 uh, on January 1. So before we get too deep into this, what does it mean in the context of this law to be exempt? Are you exempt from the rules? Is the employer exempt? Who's exempt? Uh, the, we're talking about the white collar exemptions, the executive administrative professional employee exemptions for the most part, although there are a few others. Uh, and the exemption is from the minimum wage requirements, the overtime requirements, and from certain record keeping requirements of the Fair Labor Standards Act. Generally speaking, when we're talking about this executive and administrative and some professional exemptions. What are the requirements to make those people exempt? Three basic prongs um, for each one of them. Uh, and uh, the first is that they are paid a guaranteed weekly salary that at least satisfies the minimum, currently 455, uh, and it's been in place since 2004. The second prong is that they are in fact paid on a salary basis and there's a lot of law and regulatory guidance on what is and is not being paid on a salary basis and it focuses on guaranteed pay that doesn't fluctuate based on either the quality of work or the quantity of work. And then the third and most often litigated prong is the job duties criteria. Depending on whether you're talking executive, administrator, professional, it's whether or not the employee satisfies the job duty criteria that define that exemption. So did the new regulations make any changes to either this job description or the salary basis requirement? No, and partially. Um, there were no changes at all on the job duties criteria. On the salary basis requirement, there was a fairly small change, but potentially significant, that allows an employer to satisfy up to 10% of the guaranteed minimum salary requirement um, from uh, incentive comp, sales commissions, non-discretionary bonuses, things like that. So technically, when we talk about a 684 a week minimum come January 1, it's actually 90% of 684, as long as the additional 10% is made up on an annual, at least on an annual basis. What's a highly compensated employee exception? That sounds, that sounds exciting. It is an abbreviated job duties analysis that's reserved only for employees that are quote unquote highly compensated. And um, since 2004, that highly compensated number has been $100,000 even annually, uh, of which 455 a week has to be paid on a salary basis. Um, the new um, regulations that will take effect in January, um, the $100,000 number has been moved to 107432 So a nice even round number, um, but that's an annual comp number. 
at least 684 a week has to be paid on a salary basis, but the rest of that 107, 432 can come from other forms of non-discretionary compensation. I mentioned earlier this is a long time coming, but when was the last time they really made changes to these exemptions? The last significant changes to these regs were in 2004. The Obama administration, there was a rulemaking proceeding that took place in, uh, uh, for the most part in 2015 and early 2016 that would have resulted in significant changes um, much higher than the, than the uh, salary minimums that are in this rule that would have taken effect December of 16, but uh, about a week or so before the effective date, a federal court in Texas uh, invalidated that rule and it never did become effective. So actually, when you put it like that, I mean, it seems like this liability could have been significantly higher for employers. Like, so now it's, you know, we're, we're not nearly as high as we could have been under the old invalidated rule. By comparison, uh, the weekly salary minimum under the Obama DOL rule would have been 913 a week. That's contrasted to the 684 here. The highly compensated employee threshold would have moved to 135,000, contrasted with the 107.4. And that rule also would have implemented an automatic increase in those numbers every three years without the Labor Department needing to go through what's called notice and comment rulemaking. And that is not part of the rule that's taking effect in January. So the countdown is on. This thing is going to affect on January the 1st, 2020, and that is not terribly far from now. So what do employers need to be doing right now to get ready? The first thing employers should do is focus on their currently exempt employees that meet the current minimum salaries, but might not meet the new minimum salary requirement. That's where the first level of evaluation should take place um, with an eye towards either a salary increase that will put them in compliance with the new minimum come January, or consider reclassifying the employee if the new salary minimum um, doesn't make sense from a business standpoint. Are there any particular jobs or industries that are expected to get hit particularly hard by this? Um, it could be across the board, but uh, most people believe the retail sector and the restaurant industry sector probably have the most currently exempt employees that would either need a salary increase or reclassification. You said that these changes will apply to some professionals, but not all professionals. So which, which professionals are there? What's the difference? Okay. Professional exemption is subdivided into creative professional and learned professional. The learned professional looks at academic uh, achievement, graduate school. Uh, the reg uses the language prolonged course of academic study. You're talking about doctors and lawyers and engineers. The creative professional exemption is for when, when it is truly artistic, creative endeavor, it may be somebody who an authors a book or paints a picture. Under the learned professional exemption, there is an exclusion for doctors, lawyers, and teachers. So they do not have to meet the minimum salary levels and they don't have to meet, they don't have to be paid on a salary basis the way most everybody else has to uh, in order to satisfy these exemptions. Learned. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's the, the advanced, uh, prolonged course of academic study that, that gets you there. I've met some attorneys who I didn't think were very learned. Is there anything else you need to be bearing in mind besides these new regulations? And the answer is yes, and it is at the state law level. There is no federal preemption of state wage and hour law, and there are many, many states that impose their own overtime requirements and impose their own uh, exemption requirement. Is there anything else we should know or think about when it comes to these new DOL regulations? My closing comment would be that when the regs change, like they are going to change in January, that it presents a great opportunity for employers to reevaluate their current exemptions and if they feel uncomfortable about their ability to defend them if they were challenged, that um, there's no better time to make changes in classifications than when the law is being changed so that they all go hand in hand. All right, Joe, well, this has been very helpful. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. I enjoyed it. 
And that's it for this edition of Close Up on Workplace Law. Thanks so much for joining us and see you again next time. Bye-bye.